Paris Hilton. You think you know her, right? Hotels, catchphrases, those early 2000s paparazzi chases. But what if I told you there's a whole other side to her story? Mm. One that's deeply personal and surprisingly relatable. Especially if you, like millions of others, have ever felt your brain just operates a little differently. Yeah. We're taking a deep dive into Paris Hilton's experience with ADHD, oh. as shared in her powerful essay for Teen Vogue. I, I think this is a good one. Yeah, yeah, because it's, you know, it's not often we get to see this side of her. No. And it really challenges our assumptions, doesn't it? It really does. I mean, when you mm -hmm. think Paris Hilton, yeah. you think, like you said, the glamorous life, the hotels. Right. The, you know. It's very surface. Exactly. So to hear her talking about something like ADHD. Yeah. Which so many people can relate to yeah really does make you kind of rethink things it makes it humanizes it a little bit you know what i mean it does absolutely it's like this is a real person yeah. with real experiences yeah and, and and it highlights this thing that we see so often especially with women okay that feeling of being misunderstood right you know not quite fitting into the mold yeah. that others expect of you. And you see that in her essay. Oh, absolutely. When she talks about her childhood. Yeah. About being labeled as too much from a young age. Oh, yeah. Too energetic, too talkative. I mean. Yeah. And for a kid to hear that, especially like those labels can stick with you. They can. And unfortunately, they often prevent a proper diagnosis. That's true. And access to support. Oh, for sure. Because we have this image often stemming from outdated stereotypes of what ADHD looks like. Right. Right. It's the hyperactive young boy yeah. struggling to sit still in class. And bouncing off the walls. Exactly. Yeah. But particularly for girls. Yeah. ADHD can manifest differently. It can be a lot more internalized. Exactly. It's not always the outward hyperactivity. It can be inattentiveness, difficulty with organization. Right. Maybe even heightened emotional sensitivity. Yeah. And without that understanding, it's easy to misinterpret those behaviors. Oh, absolutely. To label a child as simply too emotional right. or not trying hard enough instead of recognizing there might be a neurological basis for their struggles. And that's what struck me when Paris Hilton wrote, I wish someone had asked me what was really going on. It wasn't, you know, she wasn't just being difficult. She was a young person mm -hmm. trying to navigate a world that felt overwhelming, confusing. Yeah. And no one seemed to understand why. And that quote to me speaks volumes about a pervasive issue. Not just in celebrity circles, but across generations, socioeconomic backgrounds. It's the stigma surrounding mental health. Right. And the missed opportunities for early intervention and support. Yeah. Imagine if instead of being sent away to a stricter environment, young Paris had been given the tools and understanding to manage her ADHD. Right. His journey, while unique in some ways because of her status, reflects a struggle that countless individuals face, often silently throughout their lives. Mm-hmm. And that's where her story takes this really interesting turn, right? Yeah. Because despite carrying this weight of misperception for so long, she then hesitates to even share her diagnosis. Right. She talks about initially wanting to keep it hidden, worried about being labeled or limited by it. Oh, absolutely. And it makes sense, right? It does, yeah. If you think about the historical context of ADHD, mm -hmm. for a long time it was viewed through a very specific and a frankly limiting lens. Very much so. It was like this thing to be fixed yes not understood exactly it was all about deficits disorders yeah. what was considered wrong or lacking right thankfully there's been a significant shift in recent years yeah i think so research and just this evolving understanding has helped reframe adhd mm -hmm. as a different way of thinking okay a different way of experiencing the world interesting and that's crucial yeah because it allows us to see beyond just the challenges okay and recognize the incredible strengths and unique perspectives that often come with it. And Paris Hilton, she embraces that shift. She does. So powerfully. It's mm -hmm. like she goes on this personal journey mm -hmm. from calling ADHD a label right. to reclaiming it as her secret weapon. I love that. I know. It's so good, right? It's such a powerful statement. It is. Because it speaks like to that self-acceptance mm -hmm. yes. of advocating for your needs mm -hmm. and recognizing that how your brain works is an asset, right? not a liability. Totally. And once you understand your own wiring, yeah. you can begin to work with it Okay. instead of constantly battling against it. So it's like she's flipping the script. She is. On everything she'd internalized, maybe everything she was told about herself growing up. 
Absolutely. And that's such an important message, I think, for yeah. anyone listening right. who might be on a similar journey of self-discovery. For sure. Um, you know, it's not about denying the challenges, but it's about recognizing that those challenges often come packaged yeah. with these incredible abilities. And she doesn't shy away from showing us those abilities. No. She even connects her ADHD to her creativity, mm. that incredible entrepreneurial drive. Right. Even her ability to connect with people in a really genuine way. Yeah. She describes her brain as zigzagging instead of following a straight line. Which I think is such an apt description right. for that nonlinear yeah. thinking process. That makes sense. That's often present totally. in ADHD. Yeah. It's that ability to make connections where others might not see them. Oh, interesting. To jump from idea to idea, to think outside the box, and come up with innovative solutions. So it's like having a brain yes. that's wired for constant brainstorming? Yes. And while, of course, that can lead to overwhelm at times, right? it's also the wellspring of so much creativity okay, and innovation across various fields. I like that. I mean, think about entrepreneurs, artists, even some of the most brilliant minds in science and technology. Oh, yeah. Many have attributed their success, at least in part, mm -hmm. to their ability to think differently. Right. To embrace that nonlinearity. That's so cool. And you know what I find interesting? What's that? She's also really honest about the downsides. Yeah. Like, even amidst all this talk of secret weapons and creative breakthroughs, yeah. she acknowledges those moments of feeling overwhelmed, bombarded by thoughts. Right, because it's not always yeah. easy or glamorous. Right. It's not about romanticizing right. those challenges, yeah. but rather about normalizing them. Okay. Those feelings of overwhelm are real. They're valid. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to not have it all figured out all the time. That's true. And that's what I love about this whole essay. You know, it's yeah. that honesty, that willingness to show both the highs and the lows, that makes her story so powerful. It, does. it reminds us there's a very real person behind the headlines. Someone who's figured out how to navigate those challenges in a way that works for her. Precisely. And one of the things she talks about, which I found particularly interesting, is her love of audiobooks. Oh, yes. Yes. I was so intrigued by that detail. Yeah. It's like this light bulb moment yeah. where you realize, oh, that makes perfect sense. Right. Because it speaks to the strengths yeah. that often accompany ADHD. Okay. That incredible ability to mm. focus and engage when something truly captures your interest. Yeah. Particularly through auditory learning. Right. It's like she's found a way to kind of harness her natural wiring to make it work for her instead of against her. Exactly. And it goes back to that idea of self-discovery, of finding the tools and strategies that allow you to thrive. Yes. It reminds us that traditional learning environments, with their emphasis on sitting still and absorbing information in a linear fashion, don't work for everyone. Right. And that's okay. Totally. It's about finding what works for you, even if it goes against the grain of what's considered normal. It's so important. Yeah. That's such a powerful message, especially in a world that often values conformity over individuality. Mm -hmm. It's like Paris Hilton is saying, hey, it's okay to be different. In fact, those differences are often our greatest strengths. Absolutely. And her story encourages us to question those societal expectations, yeah. to challenge those ingrained beliefs about what it means to be successful or intelligent. Because when we embrace neurodiversity, when we celebrate those differences in how our brains are wired, that's when we unlock true potential, yeah. both individually and as a society. So for anyone listening who's ever felt like they didn't quite fit in, mm -hmm. who's ever been told they were too much or not enough, remember this. Your brain is not wired wrong. Yeah. It's wired differently. It is. And those differences are what make you unique, what allow you to see the world from a perspective that others might miss. Beautifully said. It makes you wonder how much of what we perceive as someone's personality is actually a reflection of those underlying neurological differences. Well, that's interesting. The friend who's constantly bouncing from one project to the next, full of ideas. Right. Are they just scattered? Or is their brain wired for that beautiful, chaotic creativity that leads to innovation? That is a good question. Right. Yeah. It's a fascinating question. It is. And one I think we could all benefit from pondering. Hmm. Because when we start to see beyond those labels and assumptions, we open ourselves up to a whole new level of understanding. Absolutely. Not just about ADHD, but about the human experience in general. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. It's a journey of continuous learning and unlearning, of challenging those ingrained beliefs. Right. 
and approaching the world with a sense of curiosity and openness. And on that note, I think it's time to wrap up our deep dive into the multifaceted world of Paris Hilton yeah. and the power of embracing neurodiversity. Very important conversation. We hope this conversation has sparked some new insights, mm -hmm. challenged some old assumptions, and maybe even inspired you to view yourself and the world around you with a little more empathy and understanding. Yes. Thanks for joining us. 